So the Mahindra Bolero is one of the most successful SUVs in India. In fact, it's the bread and butter for Mahindra. Well, today with me is the all new Mahindra Bolero Neo. Of course, Neo stands for new, but if you look closer, this actually looks more like a TUV 300. Well, in fact, it is. Well, basically it's not and it is because this is actually a facelifted version of the TUV 300, but because the TUV brand didn't sell so well for Mahindra, they've obviously rebranded the car and put the Bolero badge on it. Well, and here you go. This is a mixed breed between the Mahindra Bolero and the Mahindra TUV 300. You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com, and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. And of course, you can see there are definitely a few design changes that stand out, but essentially this still looks like a TUV. Yes, the front end does get a huge redesign. It's got a new front bumper, it's got new headlights, DRLs, and of course, it's much lower in its stance. And that, of course, gives it that Bolero front end shape. Even at the rear, it's been uh, tweaked just a little bit, but if you look at the overall silhouette and the shape of the car, it still very much is a TUV 300. So you can also see along the side, they've got this long uh, plastic cladding along the side of the door. The roof rails have also been removed from the TUV 300. And this one also now gets a spoiler. Even at the back, uh, the fifth wheel that's on the back door has been got a new design as well that carries it. So essentially, it does have a lot of design differences than the TUV 300. In fact, even the chassis, this is a ladder on frame chassis, the third generation for Mahindra, it's used on the Scorpio and the Thar. And of course, the TV 300 has the same chassis and so does this car here. It even gets the same engine, which is the 1.5 liter, three cylinder diesel engine that gets about 100 brake horsepower. But in this model, it now gets 260 nm of torque. Even the transmission, it's the same transmission with a five speed manual. The automatic is now gone. So we've had the car for roughly two hours today. That's all the time we got with it. So we really haven't gotten to actually drive this car and feel how it is. But the fact that it's based on the same chassis, same platform and same engine, we pretty much know that it's going to be a very good driving car. What we drove today on was a few broken tarmac sections of road. We also went on a few off-road sections. And I can safely say that this chassis is definitely a very good chassis. I've driven the cars in the past that have the same chassis. And the way this uh, car just soaks up all those bumps and all those adulations on the road, it's a really smooth driving car when you're on bad roads. And that's exactly the purpose of this vehicle. From the small amount of time you've driven the car, it does seem to have a very good ride quality. Of course, the acceleration isn't the quickest, but surely it does have enough power to have good enough fun with. The steering is also nice and relaxed and it's good for city driving as well as taking the car off-road. Then of course, the highlight has to be the suspension. The suspension setup is very good and fantastic when taking on rough roads. Now the Mahindra Bolero was sold as an affordable compact SUV that was tough, that was durable, and of course it was rugged in the way it looked. In fact, the Neo is not for purists, it's actually for a new generation of millennials who are looking to get into the compact SUV space, get a nice vehicle and go out on some nice adventures. And that's exactly what this car here, the Mahindra Bel Air Neo, is going to offer. If you go on the inside, you can see there are a lot of design changes as well. It also gets a completely new instrument cluster with reworked dials and a new MID screen in between. Other updates to the interior include new beige fabric upholstery with a textured effect, a new tilt adjustable power steering wheel and armrest for the second row seats. On the top variant, you also get a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system with Bluetooth, steering mounted audio controls and of course air conditioning with eco mode. Standard safety features on the Bolero Neo include ABS, EBD and CBC, dual front airbags, reverse parking sensors. The Bolero Neo also carries over the engine start-stop technology and the eco and ESS micro-hybrid drive modes that were also there in the TUV 300 that can help maximize fuel efficiency. Mahindra has also equipped the Bolero Neo with a multi-terrain technology which should optimize its performance over rough terrain. Now this is the optional variant uh, for the new uh, Mahindra Bolero Neo. This is the N10O and what this car exactly gets is it's not a four-wheel drive system. It's actually the same system that's found in the Thar and that is the uh, locking differential. So it's got a mechanical locking differential uh, for the rear tires and what I think that that does is that it, it controls the amount of 
torque that's sent to the rear wheels and depending on which uh, tire has the best traction, it gets the most power. Now, of course, this system works pretty well. It's a good alternative to a four-wheel drive system, but it's not uh, the best, of course, so you don't want to do too much of hardcore off-roading. But nonetheless, this is a great feature to have in the new Mahindra Bolero Neo. Now, the prices of this car also are pretty competitive. They start at around 8.5 lakh rupees for the base model and go all the way up to 9.99 lakh for the N10. The optional variant price has not been uh, disclosed yet, but we do think it'll be priced pretty good as well. So if you look at the competition, this car doesn't really have that many competitors because first of all, this is a ladder on frame chassis and this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. All the other uh, cars in that segment don't offer that. So this is definitely a more adventure oriented machine and of course that's how it's being marketed as well. So overall, you know, we've had very little driving experience as I mentioned earlier, but the car essentially is the same. It's a TUV and it rides very well. It's very comfortable inside. The seats are also very nice. I have to say that the room, again, it's not the best in the rear seat, but for the front seat passengers, it's absolutely fine. You do also have the option for two jump seats in the back, uh, so you can make it a compact seven-seater as well. So all in all, there is a lot of things that you can do with this car when it comes to being an adventure vehicle or a lifestyle vehicle for sure. Now it remains to be seen how well the new Bolero Neo will do because it still has that TUV look to it. Of course, the Bolero brand, as I mentioned earlier, is a very strong brand. It's their best-selling SUV. The TUV surely didn't do as well as the Bolero, but I think Mahindra really is hoping that the with the times that are changing now and the demands are also changing now, people are looking to go out and travel a lot more now. This vehicle could be uh, very appealing to a lot of people.